third floor, Gateway. Welcome to Campus Roundup, published by The Gateway, the University of Alberta's official student newspaper. Campus Roundup is our bi-weekly podcast with all the important campus news you need to know. My name is Lachlan, and I'll be joined on this podcast by the staff of The Gateway, who have been working to cover the issues affecting you. Welcome to Campus Roundup, Episode 2. Today, we'll be discussing the November 1st Students Council meeting with Lily Polinchuk, our staff reporter, and then we'll be discussing two important forums that happened regarding post-secondary education in Alberta. First up, let's talk about Students Council with Lily. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing very well. So, let's jump right into it. How did Council kick off their meeting this Tuesday? At the very beginning, Council moved in camera, which is when no media or guests are allowed. So why does council do this? When they are discussing something that is uh, supposed to be kept under the wraps or they don't want shared with the public, that's when they go in camera because the information is then kept between them. So although we weren't able to see the discussions, do we know anything about what they discussed while in camera? So according to the order papers, they were planning to discuss strategic threats to the students' union and tuition increases and strategies. So do we know anything about what they talked about on either of those topics? So we don't know what they talked about in regards to the strategic threats to the students' union. However, we do have a little insight to the tuition as they posted a tuition briefing in the order papers. So what I'm reading right now is from the briefing that was created by um, student execs. So... For context, before the UCP took office in 2019, a tuition freeze was put in place by the NDP government. And following the UCP coming into power, the tuition freeze was lifted and post-secondary institutions were permitted to increase tuition by no more than 7% per year over three years. So also including in the report, they have the current expected or proposed increases based on current information. So for domestic tuition, the amount is 5.5%. Um, in effect in fall 2023. For international program tuition, it's also 5.5% in effect in fall 2023. And for international cohort tuition, it's 6.5% in effect in fall 2024. But again, these numbers are tentative and subject to change. Okay, so after council finished their in-camera discussion, you were all allowed back into the room to watch the rest of the meeting. What happened next? So after being in camera for two hours, they leaded into a presentation delivered by Simran Dillon, who is a science counselor, and Fateh Arslan, who is a business counselor. And they presented on student representative association fees. So what is a student representative association and what were they talking about with them today? So a student representative association, according to the presentation given to council, refers to any association of undergraduate students that represent a definable and innumerable constituency to which Students' Council exclusively delegates its representative authority. And in general, the fee contributes to the student experience and goes back into student services. So what was the main point of the presentation that those two counselors had to counsel? One of the main takeaways or points made was when Dylan said that 30% of the students' union income comes from students, but 100% is put back towards students and student services. That's good to know. So usually after we have these presentations, they follow up with things like reports from the executives. Can you touch on what happened with those executive reports at this council meeting? Sure. So there were executive reports. Um, The main takeaway for this week was when Abner Montero, the Students Union president, made a statement, quote, We, the executives, want to give an apology for how things have unfolded with Break the Record. We recognize your frustration, your anger, and we're wanting to ensure that we move forward in serving students and improving campus life. We want to continue working with all of you to bring to life what students really want to see on campus, and we are committed to improving and listening to all of your concerns and criticism. It's an integral part of how we are held accountable and also how we can prove ourselves to all of you. Council and the student body, we just want to say that we're sorry." So. That statement from President Abner Montero is clearly a big part of the current controversy around the Break the Record event. How did Council discuss Break the Record at this meeting other than Abner's statement? So there were a few things on the order paper, however, only one motion was approved. Haroon Ali, an arts counselor, motioned to direct the finance committee in collaboration with the executive committee to complete a financial management assessment of the UASU and to complete a comparative analysis of other student unions and their financial management along with student consultation by February 7th of 2023. So that motion from Councillor Ali isn't just about 
break the record. It's looking at the entire SU's finances, right? Exactly. So Chen Preet Singh, a counselor of engineering, emphasized the importance of the SU reviewing its financial practices and students being consulted in regards to how they want their money to be managed or overseen within the students' union. So this is essentially, um, according to Ali, also a motion that will, quote, ensure that students continue to have confidence in our students' union, end quote. Thanks so much, Lily, and I'm sure you'll be back early next year to discuss the results of that report when it comes out. Sounds good. So the next story that you're here to discuss is the Better Way Alberta Tour, which held a forum that you attended recently. So let's start with the big picture. What is Better Way Alberta, and what was the dis discussion topic at this panel? Yeah, of course. So the Better Way Alberta Tour was hosted by a Public Interest Alberta in collaboration with Council of Alberta University Students, the Non-Academic Staff Association Union, Friends of Medicare, and the Alberta Federation of Labor. One stop of their tour was McEwen, and the event was live streamed to the U of A. Um, Brad LaFortune, executive of Public Interest Alberta, said that the purpose of this tour was to talk about, quote, the importance of reinvesting in our public post-secondary education system, reversing the costs, and talking about accessibility and affordability, end quote. So who were the panelists and what did they have to say about the issues? So there were three panelists, Rafat Alam, president of the Grant McEwen University Faculty Association, Matthew Yanish, former cost vice chair and current VP external of the Students Association of McEwen, and Jillian Pratt, president of NASA. Um, each panelist had a few key takeaways. So Alam called out groups that are targeting university funding and the labor market. He also mentioned that bargaining should be fair and transparent. Yanish called out post-secondary education in Alberta for being, quote, riddled with barriers, unquote, and inaccessible. According to him, a lack in grants and scholarships or non-repayable financial support, as he called it, is one of the causes of increase in post-graduation debt. Yanish also mentioned how, quote, students are facing long wait times for on-campus mental health supports, so finding services such as counseling can be entirely inaccessible and most students are now on the brink of crisis, end quote. Pratt said that she wants to see a restoration of funding towards post-secondary. She mentioned that the labor shortage and interference in bargaining is, quote, not doing anything for staff retention, unquote. She also emphasized the need for increased funding, an up-to-date government, and an elimination of performance-based funding. All right, so there was also a question and answer element of this panel. Were there any important questions and answers that you noted? Yeah, for sure. So during question period, there was a question about the relationship between political interference and government. Pratt emphasized the need for solidarity among workers, while Yanish said that he thinks, quote, universities in particular are being put into situations where their funding is being decreased, unquote. And he hopes to see a governance in which workers aren't pitted against each other. Thanks so much, Lily, for attending that forum and for being on the podcast today. Thank you. Campus Roundup is supported by our donors. The Gateway proudly produces free-to-access content thanks to the support of our monthly contributors. You can support The Gateway and keep our journalism free to access using the donation button at gtwi.ca. And for our final segment on this podcast, I'm joined by Emily Williams, our Editor-in-Chief. How are you doing today, Emily? I'm good. How are you? I am doing very well, and I'm excited to hear what you have to talk about. So. Your story is that you attended a forum, also like Lily, about post-secondary education, but yours was specific to the University of Alberta. So what was the forum that you attended? Yeah, so it wasn't exactly specific to the University of Alberta. It was hosted here, actually. Um, but there were a couple of people who were from Athabasca University. So I will just preface that uh, by saying that. But the forum was uh, about the direction the post-secondary sector is headed in Alberta. It was hosted by the Cool Institute for Advanced Study, and it was a chance for the community to discuss and respond to a recent report from the Parkland Institute, which was all about the corporatization of education. So specific to the corporatization of education, what are some of the phenomena that at the U of A we've experienced as part of that trend that the Parkland Institute highlighted? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the main thing for sure is academic restructuring. This is a process that has happened in the past couple of years in response to budget cuts. You uh, students might have heard of, uh, you know, you're part of the college of sciences. That's essentially what academic restructuring was. So they lumped together different faculties and those faculties pool resources. So they share advisors, they share um, 
support staff. And so it was a way for the university to cut costs by having less of those administrative positions. So is the U of A the only place that we're seeing academic restructuring, or have we seen what that might look like, especially in the long term at other places? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So uh, the same management firm that the U of A used was also used at the University of Sydney in Australia. And so it definitely has happened before. And someone at the panel actually was from Australia. Her name's Fiona Nicole. She's a cool scholar and a professor in the Department of Political Science. And she actually spoke on this a little bit, saying that she was worried about essentially the U of A becoming like the Australian system as someone who had kind of come from that system to do her research here. Yeah, thank you for that. So Academic restructuring has been going on for a while, but there seems to have been a recent controversy regarding it that came up specifically at the forum. Can you touch on that recent controversy? Yeah, for sure. So part of academic restructuring is they have decided to bring in a new layer of administration called uh, the college deans. So each of the colleges that were brought in by the by academic restructuring will have a college dean in charge of all of those faculties. The hiring process for the college deans is just starting to be discussed right now. And uh, at a recent general faculties council meeting, which is one of the two governance bodies at the university, um, this came up. And Bill Flanagan, who is our university president, mentioned that uh, essentially, they were not going to bring this proposal for the hiring of college deans to GFC. They were going to send it straight to BOG, which is like the governance body just above that. Um, and so this got a bit of a negative response from some people on GFC because uh, General Faculties Council is supposed to play a role in um, all academic decisions. And so it's kind of become a topic of discussion as to whether hiring these college deans is uh, an academic decision or more of like a managerial financial decision. Um, yeah. So GFC, General Faculties Council, that's one that's elected by staff and students. But Board of Governors, can you talk a little bit more about that body and the one that, according to Bill Flanagan, is going to be making the decision about hiring these college deans? Yeah, for sure. So the Board of Governors is uh, appointed by the provincial government. Um, when in 2019, when Jason Kenney came in, there was kind of um, an overhaul of the University of Alberta's Board of Governors. Lots of folks were kind of taken out. We got new people, and specifically, we did get a new board chair. Her name is Kate Chisholm. And so that was actually a big topic of discussion at the panel as well. Uh, the Parkland report that they were discussing, one of the main findings was that the UCP has appointed at least 42 people to post-secondary boards who have connections to the oil and gas sector, which overall is about 28% of university boards. And this also would include the U of A's uh, chair, who Kate Chisholm, as I mentioned, uh, she is the current senior vice president at Capital Power. And so that was a major finding of this report. And lots of the panelists discussed how this is potentially a conflict of interest when it comes to the Board of Governors. Uh, Lori Adkin talked about how this, this board that we have would never consider, for example, a divestment from fossil fuels at the University of Alberta. And so that inherently to her uh, appears to be a conflict of interest with oil and gas. So after discussing that conflict of interest, the Board of Governors reports, what was the final takeaway you would say to note from this forum? Yeah, for sure. So I definitely would say uh, there's a shift in the governance structure at post-secondaries in Alberta. The report called it corporatization. Essentially what that means is there's more management at universities in Alberta. Um, management is taking on a bigger role about these decisions and the bodies like General Faculties Council, which you know have more f faculty members, have more staff, they're kind of getting less of a say. And so there's, there's definitely a, a change in how this is structured and uh, there's a lot of faculty members and students who are unhappy about that. All right. Thank you so much, Emily, for coming to talk about that. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Campus Roundup, produced by The Gateway. 
You can catch up on all of our content at gtwy.ca or our Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Campus Roundup is also a newsletter delivered right to your inbox every two weeks with all of the important stories you need to know. You can sign up for our Campus Roundup newsletter at gtwy.ca. Thank you.